Welcome. Uh, glad that you are joining us for our video podcast. Now, if you're someone who wants the full service, who wants welcome and announcements, wants prayers, wants music, you want to go back to the YouTube page and click on the link that says full service. For those of you that are like, listen, I just kind of want the message. This is the place for you. A chance for us to learn more about how do we live our life with Jesus in the midst of all of life. And so we're glad that you are joining us. If you want to find out more information, go to our website and check it out and click on whatever links most interest you. We're so glad that you're joining us. We look forward to continuing to connect with you and engage with you. If you have questions, if, if you have suggestions, if you have things you'd like to ask us about, the best person to connect with is Leah. She is the one who would love to connect with you online in a way to help you grow in your faith wherever you are at. Well, thanks for joining us. Let's jump into this week's teaching. Welcome. Uh, so, so this week we are uh, wrapping up our series that has been focused around the question of what is our focus or what is your focus? And the way we've done it is we, we've looked at what is the focus of our church and then hopefully it has started to stimulate or move you in a direction of how can this become your focus in the midst of life as well. And so let's repeat it again. What is the focus of our church? What is the why behind everything we do? What is the purpose? What is the foundation? Simply this, to lead people to Jesus. That, that, that ultimately is, is what we are all about. And I really hope that as you have been thinking about this, as you have been kind of working this through, that you start to see how this can become the focus in the midst of your life as well. Uh, every week we've talked a little bit about some of the things that oftentimes create obstacles for us in terms of allowing this to be our focus. Because at the end of the day, when you think about a church, when you think about a desire to follow Jesus, it, it's not really out there to say our focus is to lead people to Jesus, but we want to simply acknowledge but there's times that there are barriers, there are, there are obstacles. Uh, two weeks ago, we, we looked at the idea that sometimes what gets in the way of leading others to Jesus is we put our own personal preference ahead of the needs of others. Then last week, we looked at sometimes it's the blurriness of busyness, that, that we just get so caught up in being busy and being active, and suddenly we seem to equate busyness is faithfulness, and that's not always the case. Sometimes the church gets so busy that we actually override leading people to Jesus. This week, I, I want to look at a third obstacle. And, and perhaps this is the greatest obstacle for, for many of us. That when you start to think about a church leading people to Jesus, you're like, I'm on board. I want to be a church like that. But when you pause and reflect and think for a moment, what about me? Can I live a life that leads people to Jesus? You, you pause, you get tripped up a bit because you start to think, well, wait a second, wait a second. Does that mean I have to talk about my faith? Does that mean I have to like invite people to church? Uh, and it gets really awkward and there's almost a sense of fear. You're almost kind of like paralyzed a little bit. And so I, I just want to talk about that today, about how do we step over the awkwardness of leading people to Jesus? Because I get it. I, I, I hear it and I, I struggle with this in the midst of my own life as well. There's times you may think, well, what exactly do I say? You know, I, I, I don't want to make it awkward for someone else. I, I don't want to put them on the spot. Or you may think, if I start talking about my faith, what if they start asking me questions that I don't actually have the answer to or, or I don't know how to respond? That's why today... I want to jump into a passage in the Bible, actually one that we have been looking at the past number of weeks and, and actually see how this is a great example for how we can naturally, in an unawkward, unweird way, lead people to Jesus. And so let's jump in. It's, it's John chapter one in a quick context in case you haven't been with us. It's at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. And before we're introduced to Jesus, we're introduced to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was the one who basically his life work was to lead people to Jesus. He, he wanted to lead people to the Messiah. And so he spoke about it. He, he encouraged people. And then when Jesus finally arrived, he actually told his disciples, basically, stop listening to me. 
Go follow him. He's the one. He's the guy that's going to change your life. And so it's right here that we are going to jump in. And it's a bit of a longer passage, so kind of hold with me a little bit. But, but there's an incredible, incredible opportunity for us to see how two individuals saw this as an opportunity to invite and to lead people to Jesus. Let's jump in. John chapter 1, beginning in verse 35. It says, The following day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there's the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What, what do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying. And they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, exclaimed Nathanael. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Come and see for yourself, replied Philip replied. As they approached, Jesus said, Now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know about me? Nathanael asked. Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus asked him, Do you believe this just because I told you I'd seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth. You will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is a stairway between heaven and earth. Okay, so big chunk right there. But we see what happens. You start to see the pattern. John the Baptist is telling others about Jesus. Jesus arrives and suddenly two individuals start following Jesus. They, they spend the day with him. And then we're told the next thing that happens is they go and find others and tell them about Jesus. They, they essentially lead people to Jesus by inviting them and saying, hey, come and check him out. I think as a church, I think as, as followers of Jesus, if we actually seriously want to lead people to Jesus, we need to be invitational. It, it needs to be a, become a part of the culture of our church. It, it needs to become a part of who we are. No, no matter who you are, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, whether it comes naturally or not, how do we begin to develop this in the midst of who we are? Because, because a couple of things happen. When we become invitational, it suddenly opens the doors and reminds people that they are welcome. You see, here's one of the great things about being invitational that, that you actually see in the reality of Jesus. You can belong before you believe. Maybe some of you are watching this and you're thinking, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite yet, there yet. I, I don't believe the things you believe about Jesus. I, I don't believe he is God. I don't believe all the things that, that, that others do. I get that. Understand, you can belong before you believe. Why is that important? Because it means you can be authentic. It, it means that you can ask questions. It, it means that you can have open and honest conversation about who Jesus is and about how he begins to impact your life. As a church, we want to be invitational so that people know they belong before they believe. The second thing is that as we become invitational, it really becomes a part of who we are. It's, 
It's not like, well, I go to church, but you know, other people may not want to come. Suddenly we, we start talking about it. Suddenly we become more open about our faith. Suddenly it's not just suddenly this, this awkward moment, but, but how do I become more invitational just in the midst of the different opportunities? So when maybe someone is, is, is struggling or, or someone's going through a difficulty, being invitational means you, you ask, you know, can I be praying for you? Or would you like to talk a little bit more about this? Or, or, or maybe you'd like to join me at, at church and, and talk about what faith looks like in the midst of whatever you are going through. Okay, so if, if you're with me on this, you may think, okay, okay, Joel, I get it, I get it. As a church, we want to lead people to Jesus, which means as an individual, I need to be proactive in leading people to Jesus, which means I got to come to the realization that faith is not private and I need to be invitational. So what does this look like? So I love this story because in Andrew and Philip, we, we see some incredible takeaways for us that, that if you start to look at your own life, you can do this as well. The first one is this. To be invitational means you are relational. Did you notice that Andrew and Philip went and told people about Jesus, people that they knew already, people that they had already based a relationship with? Listen, to, to be invitational doesn't mean that you have to suddenly go out on the street corner and begin inviting everyone, every stranger, every person to church or to consider Jesus. Some can do that. Some have the gift of that. But being invitational means you start with the people that you know. Family, friends, neighbors, co-workers. Like, like how can you build upon that relationship to help invite them to consider who Jesus is? By being relational, it also means that, that you start to look for opportunities. Did you notice the details that were included? In both cases, when Andrew and Nathaniel, or Philip went to uh, these individuals, they had already built upon a conversation that was there. Andrew told his brother, listen, we have found the one we have been waiting for. Philip went to Nathaniel and says, we have found the one that Moses has been pointing us towards. They had obviously had conversations, and so they jumped into those opportunities. What I start to realize more and more is that the more intentional I am about leading people to Jesus, the more I start to see opportunities coming that can easily be missed. People may be struggling. People may have questions. People may just simply ask you, yeah, so what did you do this weekend? Do you see that as an opportunity to, to start to talk about your faith? To perhaps invite someone to come along? Second thing about being invitational means leading people to Jesus is not meant to be confrontational. I think so often, you know, we see it. We see it in social media. We see people fighting with one another. But listen, a relationship with Jesus is never based upon an argument that is one. And right in this encounter, we see an opportunity where suddenly things could have gotten controversial between Philip and Nathaniel. I'm not sure if he caught it. But basically, Philip came and he was excited and he told Nathaniel, you know, we have found the one. We have found Jesus, the Messiah. He is Joseph. He's the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Now imagine Philip. He's like so excited. He's so pumped. And Nathaniel's first response, Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? That's like the biblical equivalent of a teenage eye roll right there, right? Like, really? Come on. What difference? You got to be kidding. I think many of the people that we meet are oftentimes sort of like Nathaniel. They're, they're kind of eye rollers. They're, they're kind of at a place of wondering, okay, what difference is Jesus really going to make? Like, really? Like, can I just be good? Can I just live, live a good life? Like, like, do I really need to follow Jesus? And do you notice what Philip didn't do? He didn't fight Nathaniel. He didn't get annoyed or start to argue with him. He also didn't just suddenly walk away and say, yeah, you know what? You're, you're probably right. What good does come from Nazareth? No. He said, come and see. Come and see. I think the two areas that we need to avoid is when people ask questions, when people push back, we don't fight them, but we also don't run away. 
we just simply say, listen, come and check it out. Maybe for some of you watching, you, you are at that place. You're, you're kind of like Nathaniel. You're like, I'm not so sure. We'd love to invite you to come and continue to consider more and more of who Jesus is. To come and see and check it out for yourself as well. And the third thing about being invitational is understanding this. It's Jesus that changes lives. We're asked to invite. We're asked to lead people to Jesus. But in terms of transformation, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. And at times we may feel guilty. We may think, yeah, but I've, I've been inviting and, and I, I want my family to come or I want my kids to come or I want my coworker to come and I keep inviting and inviting. I just, I just don't see what's happening. That's, that's not on you. We are called to step into a place to invite, to, to create a place for people to come and consider Jesus. And God is going to be at work in their life according to his timing. I love the fact that we're told that when Jesus encountered Simon and Nathaniel, he made it personal. He, he changed Simon's name, which is real personal, but that had huge significance. And then with Nathaniel, he, he spoke about who he was and how he knew him even before Nathaniel had ever met him. Very same thing is true with Jesus. He wants us not to follow a religion, but rather to live in a relationship. And so as you begin to seek him, understand that he is the one that's already been seeking you. He is going to be changing and transforming your life. Okay, so let's let's wrap this up. Like how what does this start to look like? Like what what are some of the takeaways? Maybe you're at this place of thinking, okay, I know this does not come natural for me, uh, but 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 I want to be a part of of a movement that is leading people to Jesus. Let me suggest a couple of things. First thing is this. Begin with prayer. You're probably thinking, okay, that that sounds like a stock answer, right? But listen, listen, listen. Pray pray for two things. One, is that you would notice the opportunities that I believe God is already laying before you. Opportunities for these conversations to, to invite, to ask people to consider who Jesus is. But then also be praying for the courage to actually have those conversations. Because I know too often you, you see them come and you're like, oh, that, I, I, I could have maybe said this or you know, offered this. And you're like, no, no I, don't, I don't want to do that. Step through those moments. Because more often than not, people will engage with you because you've engaged with them. This past week, we went on a, on a prayer walk throughout our community. And, and one of the things that just kept coming back to me over and over again is that we would step into the opportunities that God is going to present to us as a means of leading people to Jesus in the midst of our community. The second thing is look for these opportunities. Listen, as a church, one of the things that we want to do is create opportunities for you to naturally invite people to be a part of. The most obvious one is online. It's been so cool. It's been so amazing to hear people share stories of, of how they have invited coworkers or, or family members. I, I got an email about two weeks ago from a couple watching in Thunder Bay, Ontario, which for us in Paris is about 18 hours away. And, and so, so people are engaging, people are connecting. How? Because others are inviting them to join in. And I hear these stories over and over and over again. And maybe this is a great first step. You know, they can stay in the comfort of the home like you are right now, and you can invite them to consider it. Maybe this is, this is an opportunity for you to do that. And then follow up, just, just kind of see how the conversation begins to go. A, a second opportunity to invite someone to is the Alpha Film series. This is a great way for people to explore their faith, to ask questions like Nathaniel, to say, is Jesus really going to make a difference? So here's the deal. Alpha just started last week, but I spoke to Bruce and if you want to jump in, we can get you caught up to speed. No problem at all. So if you send Bruce an email, he will send you the links. It's a great way. Maybe you want to join yourself or even better. Maybe you know someone and you want to invite them to join and you will join it with them. The third opportunity is the food drive. Here's a great way to invite someone to come and be a part of what our church is doing in the community. Again, 
If you want to find out more information, email Bruce. But it's it's October the 16th and October the 23rd, right? It's a chance to come, get in the community. And you know what you'll notice? Last year when we did the food drive, I began to make relationships with people that I still have now that I otherwise wouldn't have had. And it was an opportunity for me to talk about my faith, to talk about our church, to talk about why we are doing what we do. I heard stories of people walking down the street as they were collecting food and engaged in conversation. I mean, some of the food was dropped off late because they were in, in, in the midst of these conversations. What a great opportunity. Third thing is this. Starting next week, we're going to begin a new series all around the topic of prayer. It's going to be titled Talking with God. And what it is, is a great series to invite others to join as a means of starting to see what difference can a relationship with Jesus actually make in the midst of all of life. As a church, we want to be leading people to Jesus and what it means is as individuals, we need to start to see this as a reality in our life as well. It doesn't need to be awkward. There's so many opportunities. And what we'll start to see, as we step out in faith, we'll become a part of the story. The story of how God got to work in other people's lives. You know the number one reason why people come to faith in Jesus, how they got there. Someone shared their story. Someone invited them. That could be you. As a church, we want to be invitational. Will you join us in this journey in inviting others to consider who Jesus is? Before we sign off, uh, let me pray. For you, for me, for, for this coming week. Because God is up to something. Let's pray together. So Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for the reminder of individuals like, like Andrew and uh, Philip. For the way that they were, were willing to, to lead people to Jesus. Not, not because they had all the answers. Not because they had figured it out on their own. But because they saw Jesus, what you had done. And they want others to to experience that as well. Help us this week. Help us to look for these opportunities, to not be awkward when they present themselves, to not run away, but to simply step out in faith, trusting that ultimately you are the one at work. And so Jesus, this is our prayer, that as a church, that as individuals, we'll continue to see more and more people come to know you, to love you, and to follow you, and that we've had a part to play. Because like Philip, we simply said, come and see. Come and see who Jesus is for you. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And so now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Now may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. Now may the Lord look to you always and grant you his hope his peace, his courage, and his joy today, today, and all your tomorrows. Have a great rest of your week.